Allison, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, although I, I do have to say, when I agreed to do this, no one told me I was going to be following Michaela on the agenda. <laughs> that is a tough act to follow. It is amazing. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, she's, uh, she showed up. It's awesome. Impressive. Um, Allison, uh, you're responsible for 500,000 technologists. Not many people can top that. Um, what is the biggest challenge that you see in upskilling at that scale? This is going to be like a good therapy session for me. I get to tell you all about my problems and challenges <laughs> and so forth. Um, actually, I'm going to start in a different way, though. I'm going to start by talking about the things that are not challenges for me, yep. but are challenges for a lot of people who are in roles like mine. Mm -hmm. At Accenture, we do not have challenges with leadership alignment around learning. We don't have challenges with investment budgets for learning. And we don't have challenges with there being a learning mandate across every level of our organization. We've been at this for a while. We've got the ecosystem, the infrastructure, the processes, the C-suite endorsement of everything that we're doing at every turn. Mm -hmm. But where we are struggling is at much more of the human level. When you think about, yes, we can talk about our 500,000 people, but at the end of the day, that is a collection of 500,000 single human beings, individuals, who are constantly looking at what are the skills I need for today? What do I need for tomorrow? Which of the seven different voices that I'm hearing internally and externally should I listen most closely to mm -hmm. in terms of what's gonna be most important for the next quarter, the next year? You can imagine the confusion, the lack of clarity that is coming into their world to say, where should I be focusing my time? So I would argue our challenge is a very human one mm -hmm. that Anyone, whether you're a technology leader or a learning leader or anyone involved in upskilling across an organization, regardless if your organization is 10 people, 10,000 or 500,000 is dealing with, which is how do we help our people find their own personalized journeys, personalized paths, and then optimize the energy that they invest in learning, which is actually why I'm so excited about the continued enhancements with role IQ, skill IQ, and where that's going, because to me, that's starting to solve the human challenge that we are all up against. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that even at that scale, you care about the one learner and, and being able to personalize all their learning. That's Absolutely, I mean, our, our CHRO says all the time, it is our job to sweat the small stuff. Yeah. And to never, you know, scale is important, right? Absolutely, but scale is made up of, of human beings one by one. Yeah. How do you approach managing uh, skill development at that scale? So, so the first thing we do, right, from, from the perspective of our learning and leadership development team, we look and say, what's the content? What's the challenge? Where are we going? Mm -hmm. Can we get it externally? Does this content already exist? Is there a best-in-class partner that we can bring on board, bring into our ecosystem? And how do we do that in such a way that, um, I'm not sure if you've heard of the concept of a personal learning cloud for someone, but how do we do that in such a way that we're actually creating a personal learning cloud for our employees? Um, so Pluralsight is obviously a big, big component of that. <laughs> <laughs> but then there is the world of, let's say, the other third of the content that we do need to create for whatever reason. It's an Accenture-specific offering. It's part of our special sauce, whatever it may be. We always have more demand coming into our team than we can manage from a supply standpoint, right? In our world, supply is our organizational capacity. So there's two new things that we have been doing over the course of the past one to two years at this point. One is bringing agile into learning and leadership development. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean agile like, oh, we're going to do it fast, we're going to do it flexible, isn't that going to be great? I mean like legit agile, like scrum, scrum masters, product owners, value stream owners, all of that. That has been super interesting, mm -hmm. both with respect to the speed we're able to deliver, the quality we're able to deliver, but also with respect to the opportunities and the workload management of our team, kind of bringing it back and saying, hey, how do we help our people, our learning and leadership people, make sure they're focused on the most important stuff all the time? Yeah. So that's, that's one big piece. The other big piece, and this is new for us, this is something we're doing just this year, taking Agile up a level, the concept of portfolio management, bringing that into learning and leadership. Mm -hmm. Getting consensus across our 500,000 person organization over what our investment sectors are, what's gonna matter most, how are we gonna allocate resources across them, and the default of that is also saying what's not important. 
right? So we have this concept of the wise pivot at Accenture where we look and say, what do we need to do to grow our core? What do we need to do to evolve and be in the new? And what do we need to leave behind? Getting to that point of what we're going to leave behind is not easy, yeah. but this is now brought up to our, to our C-suite. Our, our C-suite today is actually weighing in on what those investment priorities will be. I love, I love the strategy. I love the alignment um, on the company level. And it's really amazing to kind of see that, that structure and that uh, scale of skill development. So we talked a lot about cloud today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the cloud native college that you guys have at uh, Accenture? Absolutely. So cloud native college, uh, at its core, this is a blended credentialing program that is combining training, on-the-job application of skills, interviews, and such. And Pluralsight is our go-to partner with respect to the training component of it, right? The actual skill development, the assessment, the pathing, all of that. Um, it is a pilot program. We pilot things in the average, you know, five to 500 to 1,000 people. So this is a pilot program of 700 people. Um, we are using this, intending to use this, to grow it, to s continue to scale our modern engineering practice. So that's a practice of about 35,000 engineers right now that we're continuing to scale. So this will very much sit at the heart of how we're helping our people continue to build their own skills across front end, full stack, microservices, and making sure that we are growing them holistically um, as we scale that practice. Yeah, I love that. So earlier, um, Aaron talked about this new era where skill development leaders uh, are partnering with the business partners in, in, in tech. Um, what, uh, you know, and you're a great example, by the way, of that leader. You're already living in this new area. Um, what advice do you have for developing and maintaining successful partnerships? You're in learning. You have these business technology leaders um, th that, that you're partnering with. How do you maintain that successful partnership? I, I think about it a little bit differently, and I don't mean to sound flippant when I say this, but I truly don't believe this is an option. Mm -hmm. If you are an HR leader that does not find energy in partnering with business leads, partnering with your technology leads to grow your people, it's probably time to find a new career path. <laughs> and I would say the same thing for those of you who are in here as business leaders and technology leaders. If you don't find energy in growing your people, it might be time for a conversation about going back to the world of being an individual contributor. Um, I, just, I don't see it as an option. Um, you know, Aaron's talking about the kind of the trifecta of a technology and business leader with respect to, you know, strategy, skills, and visibility, mm -hmm. right? To me, that applies across all dimensions of the business, right? And if I bring that back to what do I expect from our learning organization, yeah. absolutely strategy, absolutely skills. And I'm not just talking skills and learning. Like, if we're not talking the talk and walking the walk of the technology skills, the functional skills, the industry skills that we're teaching, we're just not going to be effective. Yeah. And that visibility piece, you've got to be out there on the front lines. You've got to be out there experiencing it, living it, um, and really being seen as an active partner in growing the business. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. Um, last question. We have uh, learning leaders out in the audience. What advice do you have for them in thinking about their upskilling for the future? Oh, great question. OK, we all know the analogy of the cobbler's children, right? The cobbler's children never have shoes. My advice for learning leaders out there is do not allow your teams to become the cobbler's children. Do not deprioritize the skill development of your learning teams, because by doing so, yeah. we're, we're setting the organizations back. So just like we're talking about upskilling the organization with really critical today and tomorrow technology skills, make sure your learning leaders are learning that as well. Make sure they're making the time to learn. Make sure they're drinking their own champagne, um, the same champagne they're delivering out to the organization. Again, it, it goes back to being able to walk the walk, talk the talk, and be a true partner in the growth of the business. That's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Allison Horn. Thank you. Thank you so much.